Hello and welcome back. Welcome to my channel. And I am so happily sharing my cookie recipes because people have been asking them for them for years. Because I've been literally making these cookies for good, um, I want to say good 14, 13 years. So it's my tradition. These cookies are, they come from the Trieste part of Italy and they are um, gluten-free. They are made out of almond meal. There's only four ingredients. They're extremely easy. Well, I added the fifth one because there was too much sugar. So I put a little lemon zest and a little lemon juice. But they are called Montini, Montini cookies. They are chewy. I shape them as balls, and you can be extremely creative how you want to shape your cookies but I put them all in a packet and I like them to have their distinct shape. Um, so these cookies require uh, four, uh, hold on, they require 600 grams of almond meal. <laughs> I buy my almond meal on Amazon. This is not, this is not bleached almond meal which is much cheaper than the regular one. So let me put the bowl straight on the scale. Subtract the weight of the scale and then measure 600 grams of almond meal. I like these cookies and there are a lot of people who are allergic to gluten and I make a couple of gluten free cookies and all of them I shape in round holes. I'll show you a couple of wonderful recipes you will fall in love with them. Now, it also requires so 600 grams of almond meal and 400 grams of sugar. I find this obscenely sweet. Uh, so I will only add 300 grams. So 600 plus so 900 total. If you want to follow the recipe, it's 400 grams of sugar. It is too much. So I just added 250 and it should be plenty. Then you need two eggs, two large eggs. I already cracked them up. It is very forgiving to put everything in. Two eggs and let the machine do the magic of mixing. Extremely easy. Now, you need brandy or cognac or some sort of a, this is a nice pruner cognac, French. It probably lasts me gazillion years because we rarely drink it. I remember my parents prized cognac and they drank it with coffee or just like an aperitif with a slice of lemon. I'm not drinking now at all, but you would have to kill me to make me drink some of these hard liquors. So I like to make it more interesting and I add lemon juice, uh, about one tablespoon, and I like it even more interesting and I will zest one lemon and all of that because they are pretty sweet and cognac accentuates the sweetness in them. And I like them to have notes. You know, the cookies should have all different flavors. That's why I'm using spices. Um, and I've assembled amazing, amazing cookies from all over the world, Persian, Syrian, Scandinavian countries, every country has something wonderful. And I'm gonna record 
at least eight for you to try. And the world is a magnificent place and there's so much, so many great flavors out there. So this is it. You saw it, I went straight on the scale. Now I'm gonna let the machine do the mixing. The dough will come together. I will wrap it in the plastic wrap, you know the drill. It goes in the fridge for a couple hours, gets hardened, and then I'm gonna be rolling small balls about this size, I'll show you. And they're extremely delectable. And the cookies bake very quickly. It only takes, uh, you know, it only takes a couple minutes to bake cookies. So um, stick around, I will continue. All right, so these are the martinis. This is how the dough looks. And it has been refrigerated overnight. You don't have to refrigerate it that long. I'm gonna take all of my rings because we're gonna shape them into the bowls. You can shape these cookies into any shape you want. Classically, it's made in the round shape. I have a bowl of warm water because the dough is sticky. And when you have a sizable amount of it, uh, it will stick to your hands. The oven is warming up, 350 degrees, and they only take seven to 10 minutes, depending on your oven to bake. And I will roll these fairly quickly, but this is the size I like mine. They will not rise any bigger. And when I put them in the bag um, as gifts, I want everything to be bite size, more or less. So I'm gonna sit here peacefully and just roll these balls. It's very therapeutic. And then I'll put them in the oven, and when they come out, I'm going to show you. Uh, the reason the dough is a little bit darker, because the almond meal is, um, these are not shelled, these are not uh, de-skinned almonds, so they're a little bit darker. But you'll see when they bake, they're not brown. It's just the color of the wet almond. So this is the, this is how I'm going to continue and I'm going to pause the video and regroup after the bake. So you see how they look. All right, so here they are. See, they have a little bit of the crust on the outside. Inside they're pretty soft. When they come out first, let them just rest. They rested, then I picked the spatula, lifted them up. They're still warm to the touch, and I will just transfer them to the bowl, and they will wait for their time to, to be put in the bags together with the other cookies. They, um, they're very light, delightful, a little bit crispy on the other outside, soft on the inside. Uh, for for the juice of Trieste, they use these for Purim. Um, it's a holiday in the Judaic tradition, and this is it. And this batch makes about eighty cookies, so it's quite generous in terms of how many you can make. If you need more, you can double them, but it's fairly a large bowl that this batch made for me. And I'm sh I'll show you in a separate video how I sort of assemble these world cookies together. This is it. They're extremely easy to bake and they're just wonderful. And if you'd like to have a lighter color, use the blanched, um, elements you can use hazelnut any kind of flower that you want but this is essentially it from my house to yours <laughs>